T time for the real story. In our post 9-11 world, we all get a little freaked out when we fly for a myriad of different reasons. Lately, the real story is these days when you see something and then you say something, it may come back to bite you in the butt. Stay tuned though. Looks like this real story kind of has a happy ending. Last fall, when U.S. passengers saw a group of Islamic imams switching seats, making strange requests, generally acting suspicious, they thought, they alerted airline officials as they should have. U.S. Air contacted the police and the imams were removed from the flight. The imams then sued not only U.S. Air, but also the police officers and the passengers who blew the whistle on them. Fortunately, cooler heads and common sense have prevailed and it looks like the imams are dropping their suit against the passengers. Hang on. The Associated Press reported that yesterday, and it looks like it may have been premature. What we've been able to find out today, it looks like the turbulent times over the passengers are uh, not going to go away. Here with more is Zudi Jasser. His organization, the Islamic Forum for Democracy, was set up to represent the passengers if the suit went forward. Zudi, tell me the, the latest. You, you don't think that this was dropped because of the goodness of anybody's heart? No, they basically, uh, in a motion before the court, had to identify who they were suing by name. They added some employees of U.S. Airways, and simply because there were no passengers named, the AP sort of uh, jumped the gun. And I think it's just part of an evidence of how hungry America is to to see this nonsense, this political Islamist move, go away, and it's it's not going away. Sudi, would you do me a favor? Would you, because I, I had an off-the-record conversation with the president in the Oval Office yesterday, and we talked about Islam, and the this is not a war on Islam, but political Islam, and I don't think very many people understand that. Can you quickly summarize the difference between Islam and political Islam? Islam is the spiritual faith that I practice when I pray, when I fast, and I, and I get close to the God of Abraham and follow the spiritual message of the Prophet Muhammad. Political Islam is a global political movement to mix the political agenda of theocrats, of imams, of clerics that want to run society and invoke their own interpretation of Islam and Sharia law upon societies and government uh, and I, separate uh, the world between Islam and non-Muslims. For lack of a better uh, example, uh, I would compare it to... Um, the Catholic Church of today, the non-political Catholic Church of today, and what we had, you know, in the Dark Ages with the Catholic Church. There was a political Catholic Church, and then it was separated from that, and that's when the Catholic Church became the Catholic Church that it is today. Exactly, and that's why it's so key. What, what, sa what saved us from theocrats of Europe was pious Christians that came and formed America, came through a, a, an enlightenment where they wanted to be free to be pious and get close to God, and that the ultimate piety was when they were not being told what to do by government, right. but, but by natural and, law. And this is what makes this whole imam thing so frightening, because it is a, um, uh, a, a a way for people to be afraid to question political Islam. Exactly, and that's why the, the victimization agenda and the part where these guys said that it's all about their prayer, it wasn't about their prayer. There are legitimate fears of, of citizens all over this country. And if we don't acknowledge that and say that we are Americans who happen to be Muslim, that will subscribe to, to uh, uh, fears of safety that others have, and that we are Muslims who demand to be American, which is what CARE and their agenda is all about, there's a big difference there, and we need to fight this, and religious liberty, you know, the Beckett Fund just put in a, a brief in this case saying that this is a mockery of religious liberty. Religious liberty is all about us standing up to uh, uh, reporting things when we see them, to living uh, in a society that we don't need to have military law, and being able to compromise a bit on things when we know that it's not about discrimination, and that's not what this case is about. Sudi, thank you very much. Uh, as always, stay safe and keep speaking out. Now, part two of our special series on Fred Thompson, the man, the politician, the entertainer, and tonight a little bit on his wife after this piece. We'll take a look at how the celebrity status